Thank you very much, Mr. President. <coughs> um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the last debate of the term and indeed the academic year. Ladies and gentlemen, my speech tonight has two very simple themes. Firstly, that making the news is desirable, and secondly, that reporting it well, is bad. Reporting, it is, reporting the news is bad not just because of the nefarious means by which it is often carried out, but because simply reporting it or narrating the story is dry, plain, and frankly, in and of itself, provides little to no added value. Surely you would rather partake in nefarious scheming than nefariously scheme to write about other people's nefarious schemes. <laughs> Moreover, as will be discussed in greater depth, the motion is something of a false dichotomy one which I am sure the opposition will attempt to exploit. They will try to paint a picture of themselves as vanguards of the objective truth. But yeah, as soon as we realise that reporters don't just reveal the agenda, they actually set it, whatever the positive values of actually being in the news, we will understand that one could not possibly claim that reporting the news is better than making it because it is simply impossible to report the news without actually making it. Firstly, though, as the first proposition speaker, it falls upon me to introduce our speakers for the opposition. Opening the case for the opposition will be Amelia Hamer, Standing Committee, Somerville College. As all of you who have received the electoral rich literature will undoubtedly know, Ms. Hamer is running tomorrow for the esteemed Office of Librarian Elect, which ironically I am privileged to currently occupy. As Joey mentioned, usually this debate is between the two presidential candidates. However, as there is only one presidential candidate, um, it moves to the candidates for the Office of Librarian Elect, the second most senior um, officership contested. Um, as, as, as Joey's also mentioned, uh, two of the other candidates have not decided to speak this evening, and so Ms. Hamer will be the only candidate for librarian elect speaking. Now, the treasurer, Christopher H. Frost, Oriel College, is also contesting the position. However, he uh, seems unable to make the short walk from his chair down to the floor, and so will be unable to contribute to tonight's debate. Um, now, actually, some of you might be wondering about this. This actually isn't the first time in the union's history that a boyfriend and girlfriend have run against each other for the same position. I am reliably informed that uh, in Michaelmas term 2009, Jockey McLean and Poppy Simister of Christchurch ran against each other for the position of standing committee. The third candidate, Crawford Jameson, a standing committee, Trinity College, has unfortunately decided not to attend debate tonight's debate for personal reasons arising within the last 24 hours. Um, upon his decision not to attend, I was then called and then began to put together this shoddy, es shoddy excuse of a paper speech. Um, <laughs> we are. Sorry. Can you get this on Sufax? Well, just checking. Um, <laughs> we are lucky to also be joined by Isabel Oak Oakshot, the political editor of the Sunday Times and a regular commentator on BB1 Politics Show. Um, in 2012, she was awarded the Political Journalist Award of the Year at the UK Press Awards um, following her exclusive story on Chris Hune. Um, he'll be followed by, she'll be followed by Mark Easton, um, who joined the BBC in, in 1986 before moving to um, Channel 5 in 1996 and Channel 4 in 1998. He then returned to um, be the BBC in 2004 and he is currently the BBC home editor and a prolific blogger. Mr President, these are your guests for the opposition and they are most welcome. There is, however, one more person who needs to be thanked this evening, although he, of course, needs no introduction. Um, this is, as we, as we have said, the last public business meeting of the term, and I personally would like to congratulate Joey on an incredible term. He has had some truly magnificent speakers, Nancy Pelosi, um, Peter Singer, Ken Livingston, and, uh, and a very, very impressive array of debates. On top of this, he's hosted the Pan-Africa Conference and Frost Nixon, a play has been performed in this, um, in, in this exact chamber. Um, Joey, you've been a great president and wish you, we wish you all the best for the future. Okay. And now on to my substantive case. <laughs> Firstly, and this is sort of a minor point, is that journalists, in their attempt to be journalists often do bad things. I mean, that's sort of a, a minor point. But the second is that journalists as reporters are the worst types of journalists. We don't want them to simply report or narrate a story. And I'm not just, not just being sycophantic here. I mean, this is an important distinction between you know, 
uncovering something and simply acting as you know a mirror or as that that's how they'd like to portray themselves in the portrayal of events in terms of uh, doing bad things i mean we i, I don't need to list you know, the recent controversy, the recent charges littered against the British press. The Leverton Inquiry, Millie Dowler. It shows that journalists, not, not all, but many, you know, their simple goal is to repeat salacious and useless gossip about things which is, even, are not of broader significance. And, and this is the kind of, not only is this bad, I think this is endemic of the general feeling of, of news journalism as a sort of a reporting idea rather than an you know, intelligent uncovering thinking, analytical profession, which it can be. And I like to stress again that this is not an attack on journalists. This is an attack on a way that journalism is sometimes carried out by some members. I mean, um, sorry. Of course, there is still a place for insightful and relevant analysis and commentary on a situation to interpret and add flavour and context to, to events and the overwhelming amount of information we are now confronted with. I do not believe that you know, it is possible for the average individual within the course of their life to understand everything that is going on in the world around them. And I think that journalists can play an incredibly important role in interpreting and presenting the information. But the main point I'd like to make tonight is that journalists are best when they are not simply reporting, but actually making the news. Now, I've got a couple examples. Um, let's take the example of, I mean, three. WikiLeaks is, is the first one. One of the reasons why WikiLeaks was so revolutionary is it was not simply a journalists and you know, men and women interested, bloggers, men and women interested in journalism and bloggers reporting the news. They were actually creating a story and making something for people to listen to, and which gave people a true you know, insight, an insight they would not have had without their journalists. They were not simply acting as a messenger, conveying you know, a story from one person to another. They were finding something out for people. And that is the sort of journalism we want to see, but that is not reporting the news, that is making it, ladies and gentlemen. There's another point here, and this is why, I mean, there's, there's a personal element why I would never want to be a journalist, but it also ties in with the general idea of why journalists as reporters are bad, whereas journalists as people involved taking an active role in the news are something altogether very, very different. And this is because, ladies and gentlemen, journalism is a failing industry. There's failing circulation for newspapers, which pay the best, poor job security, and you know, you all know, if one wants to become a journalist from, from Oxford and Oxford and Cambridge, it's one of the most difficult jobs to get into. They take you know, a national newspaper like The Sun will take two or three people a year, um, and this is you know, the biggest you would assume one of the biggest newspapers in the country. They will take two or three people. It's incredibly difficult to get a job in journalism. Now, you don't want to be in that industry, quite simply. It's an industry populated by older people who want to support their jobs and they don't want to hire new people, they don't want to take new blood in. And that's a real, real worry. Um, but there, yeah, okay. And, and, and so, sorry, <laughs> traditional reporting of this manner was, was seen as an, inter, what, what the reporters of this manner saw themselves as intermediaries. Reporting, so taking information from somewhere and showing it to someone else from somewhere else. In, the internet age, in the digital age, this is no longer necessary. Before the digital age, this was a necessary evil. The person who would act as the intermediary and the, inter and the interpreter of facts, albeit coloured by his or her conscious, conscious unconscious or avo avoidable biases, he was necessary in order to portray, or in order to inform the general public of what was going on. But, but it was still biased, but that is no longer necessary now. Because with the advent of the digital age, we have a huge democratisation of information. Information is effectively free now. We do not need these journalists to spin it for us. We can access it more or less within ourselves. I mean, obviously, someone at some point needs to actually write something, but that does not require a sort of professional, a professional core of journalists, which we see today. And I, yeah, you sure. Say if you were just a person like putting information or reporting something, putting it on the internet, you're thereby reporting. You are. You are reporting it. You are reporting it, but you're also making it, aren't you? because that story didn't exist before you put it up there. And finding that, and, well, I mean, and that, is, that, is, that is broadly true, but in a way you cannot make the story without reporting it. And that's the point I think I'm trying to make. And I'll go on to discuss why how actually uncovering stories and then taking an active and contributory role is far, far better than simply mirroring what has, go what has gone on. Um, a good example of how, um, of how journalists, particularly in the modern age, are, you know, 
although they try to present themselves as simply a mirror of what is going on, are, more, are much more like a prism. They add their angle and they twist the story. When WikiLeaks went to the New York Times to release State Department cables, the New York Times cooperated with, with the state, uh, you know, actively um, collaborated with the State Department to ensure that they did not release any information which was particularly damaging to US national security. Once again, showing that journalists are not the objective mediators they claim to be. They have, like everyone, an agenda. In as much as that they cannot simply report what is going on, they are making it because they have a particular spin, they want to add it. It is not possible to objectively report the news in this way. Um, and, and Bill Keller, the New York Times editor from the Times, freely admits that when, when he was given these, um, these cables by WikiLeaks, that he, he sp well, not spun it, but that he specifically did not publish certain things which he and others believe would be damaging to national security. It's a great example of how you cannot just reflect what is going on. You are going to be biased and you are going to filter out things which you do not like. Mm. One more example. Many of you will have seen the collateral um, murder video which WikiLeaks um, released. The interesting thing about that video is it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't decrypted. It wasn't found by a bunch of professional, uh, a cadre of professional journalists sitting in an, office, in an office somewhere. WikiLeaks advertised that there was this video up and they asked you know, people, you know, normal people with other jobs, with other, other interests, to do their best at trying to decrypt this video. As a result of this, we've seen horrible brutality on the part of the US military, and not because we had reporters acting as reporters trying to go out there and, and, and present a true story, but because lots of people collaborating together with other interests had a general a, a passion to uncover information, to uncover what was going on. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope I made the point this evening, before I wrap up, which can be followed up by other people on proposition, that it's simply impossible to just report the news. By reporting the news, one is making it. You cannot claim to just report it, and therefore you cannot claim that reporting the news is better than making it. Joey, thank you very much for having me this evening. Congratulations on an excellent term. I beg to propose the motion. Thank you very much.